Why hello there guys, my name is Fat Ninja Turtle and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on the Motion Track 3D logo and text right here. So let's get let's just get straight into this tutorial. What you're going to need is probably a trick shot clip, looks best with that and I'm just going to put this on half quickly. And so as you see right here, he, he shot the dude and then he starts running forward and I want to start the motion track where his gun is off the screen. So let's get the exact frame right there and I'm going to hit B so I can um, trim my work area. I'm just going to keep going until he starts spinning. So right here, and then I'll hit N. And then I can just trim my work area. Okay, so now what you're going to do is go to Google. So I'll make a new tab, go to Google. And say you just want to get your 3D logo. So I'm just going to type in phase clan, or dare as I used, phase clan logo. Okay, so now let's just go look for uh, a good one. How about that one? That's good enough. And then just right click, save image, and put it on your desktop for now. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Save image. And you guys can probably hear my dark dog barking in the background. Okay, so now we're just going to import my image. Go to your desktop. Find your image. So it's right here. Fizz hoodie. Bring it in and obviously mask it out so let's just put this on full for a few seconds oopsies and I'm gonna use my hand tool and I can just mask this out really quickly because the phase logo is pretty easy to mask out and somehow I mess up okay just mask this out oh and by the way sorry I didn't upload this weekend like I know it's Sunday now it's still part of the weekend but I was gonna upload Friday and Saturday, but I was just really tired from my swim meet, so I decided not to. But yeah, I have the time now, and almost done. And then just connect the dot. Okay, so now we've done that. We can just feather it to about three pixels. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this layer, and I'm going to motion track this. So I just got to right click on the layer and track camera, and it should take probably like 10 seconds because it's such a short period of time. So I'm just going to see how long it tells me it's going to take. If it's over a minute, then I'll stop or I'll pause it or whatever. Come on. Yeah, I'm just going to pause it and I'll be back once it's done. Okay, we're back. Now it's solving camera. So once it's finished analyzing, it should go to this step, solving camera, which is step two out of two, as it says. So we're just going to give it a few seconds to do that because it doesn't take too long. Okay, now let's click on our 3D camera tracker right here. And then you see these little points. So since this is a clip, you don't get that many points because you have that little thing there and everything. So I'm going to find, I'm going to wait to see if I have a point over here. I should have one. If not, then I'm going to have to use like a point here. Create null in camera. And what I'm going to do is for my null, I'm going to reposition it a lot. So let's scale that down and then open up the transfer op transform options. For the orientation, this is what we're going to have to move. Well, and the position. So position, let's bring it back. Um, Z position, let's make this 2000. 2000, so it's back there now. Okay, and then let's mess with the orientation a bit. Let's scale it up so I can see it better. Scale. Okay, orientation. Now let's mess with this a bit. You can do this with practically any single trick shot clip because most trick shots they jump off like a high um, distance whatever they jump off something high so you can do it with a lot of trick shot clips okay so now let's see if it's um, in the right position it's not so we can just adjust it a bit more okay bring it back okay um it's practically in the right position I'm just gonna bring it forward a bit lower Okay, let's see now. It's still moving a bit, but we don't need to worry about it because we can. We don't. The, the null doesn't really matter. It just helps helps us as a source point. So now I'm gonna make a text, and I'm just gonna type in FMT. And I don't care about like uh, any of that stuff because it's not gonna be needed. And bank gothic. I'll put bolds on. And we can just leave that. Turn it off. Okay, now make a new layer and call this element. Go to effect video copilot element 
Okay, so just wait for it to load because it takes a few seconds. Okay. Now it's blank screen, it does it sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate my shot first, because once I'm done, like once I go into the scene setup, it goes unblank. And I freeze frame, delete the camera tracker on that, and I can add a Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur. Come on. Come on. Okay, and I'm just gonna put this to twenty two. Okay, now close it up, go to element, and now this is where I, I mess with everything. Go to texture maps and set your texture, then go to layers, and I'm going to set my um, my phase logo first, and then I'll do the FNT afterwards. Okay, so now extrude, environment, boom, boom, and we have this very clean phase logo. Just go to a bevel, choose a random one, so I'm just going to get it double down, and I'll play with it a bit. And what I'm actually going to do is go here. And at the bottom, there's an option. It's like a, something about curves. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But I, li I like to fix it, but you don't really need it. Oh, here it is. Bevel curve. Yeah. I'm going to like bring that down all the way to like zero. Because I hate when it's uh, curved. So bevel curve zero. Or does, it, does it do it for everything? No, it doesn't. Zero and zero. And make sure it's on everything. OK. So now we could change, so now it looks a lot better, I find. We can change the shiny light color to blue. Okay, we're good. Now, you can just leave it there, and you see it's shiny and everything. And we can play with reflection and all that if you want to. So I'm just going to leave it for now, click OK, and it should go on black for, well, it should go on black any time now. Okay, there we go. So now we have our phase logo. It's on the screen, but it's not in the right Z space, so it's not really motion tracked that well. So let's just go to group one. Actually, first, I'll do that afterwards. Group one, particle replicator, and I'm going to set the Z position to about 2000. Okay. I'm going to go to particle look. I'm going to scale it up. Scale it up a bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to go to rotation. X rotation, I'm going to bring it up a bit so it's like flat to us. So positive 9 is what I use in this condition so that's good okay move it over a bit okay just leave it there for now and let's just see if it's tracked so it is tracked however we're gonna have to mask this part out afterwards so we'll do that in a second so yeah it's, it's tracked in the 3d space pretty well maybe bring it a bit back we'll see maybe yeah forward so 1700 make it smaller okay we'll see I'm just gonna just mess around with your settings a bit okay I'm just showing you the concept of it okay so now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a new solid and call this mat turn off the mat and turn off the element for now get your pen tool and just mask out this thing this plane wing and does not need to be neat at all because like it has to be approximately the right location everything but it doesn't have to be like beautiful because we can feather it and everything so yeah just like that just like that whoopsies and just bring it like this okay and then keep going go over 10 every single time like that like that boom boom and bring that there and then bring that there and then go to the end and actually we'll go until it's off the screen so right here pretty sure it's the last frame and then it's off yeah oh wait no it's still there a tiny bit drag that down okay now it's gone so we can crop it there okay now just go to your feather and feather this to 10 pixels I feathered that right okay good now we can leave it Okay, so go to your element layer, turn it back on, and what we're going to do is put the, first of all, we're going to alpha invert this, so now we can't see the bottom of the phase logo, which is normal. Drag this down, and I'm going to rotate it a bit. Okay, that looks nice. Bring it down, down, down. Down a bit more, so it's off the screen. Okay, we're good. Okay, now I'm gonna go one, two, 
so up to 20 frames because I want it to be coming up fast, uh, slow, and then it goes down really fast. So now we bring it up and we could bring it up a bit more. Okay, so that's good. Now we see the phase logo and let's go here. With, with, go back one frame where the mat ends. So I can hit U and I can, oopsie, I can hit U on this and I can drag this back a bit because that's a bit unreasonable. And I could copy. Actually, I don't need to copy it because then it'll go down all the way and we don't want that. We just want it to go down just so it's off the screen completely. So just bring it off the screen, keep going. It's almost done, come on. Come on. Okay, we're good. Now what we can do is just easy ease. The okay, I'm not gonna click F9. I'm gonna right click because F9 pauses my Contagia and I do that every single time. So now what I'm gonna do is go to group one, close that up, and go to path layer two, choose FNT, go to scene setup, and I'm gonna duplicate my extrusion model, make this to custom path two, scene uh, group two, and I can what I can actually do is grab on another double down, and I can put it back to group two, put everything to zero for the bevel. Uh, sorry, not whoopsies. I meant to do that for the bevel curve. Zero, because I hate the curves. It just makes it look ugly. Zero, um, zero, and zero, and we could leave it as red, so it's different. Okay, leave that for now, and wait for it to load. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, what I'm actually gonna do first? I'm gonna turn on my FNT layer. So as you can tell, as you can see, we have our text, and I'm gonna double click on it, and I'm gonna bring the letters in a bit. Okay, yeah, so they're closer together. That's good. Now we can turn this back off. Okay, so it applied to the element as well, which is what we, what I wanted. Now go to your element layer and go to group one. Close up all of this stuff. Go to copy paste. So copy. Go to group two. And paste. So, but we are going to have to keyframe again, but shouldn't take too long. So we hit U here. And then we're going to go to particle replicator. Um, position X Y. We're gonna keyframe it. Go to this keyframe, and we're gonna um, bring it over, and we're gonna bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Okay, and then we'll go to particle look. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller because I want it to fit in between the lines of the phase logo, just like at the end of it. So just keep scaling it down element is really really slow if you guys haven't uh, realized just yet okay bring it over a bit and bring it up and we're good I think that's good enough okay now go back to start keyframe and I'm just gonna go through this quickly I'll put this on half I'm just gonna ramp preview this quickly to see if it is in line no so no it's not so what I did I'm just gonna hit U to see all my keyframes. What I do to fix that is I go to this keyframe and I see, one second, I just need to see what's what. Okay, so my X position is 868. Go back here and put 868. Okay, so now they have the same Y position and they have the same X position. So if we just ramp preview this quickly, we can see that it stays about there Oh, it's because it's not easy ease, that's why. So once I easy ease it, it will make a difference. And then go back here and just drag it down. Oopsies, wrong position. Bring it down to 20, 3, 4, 4, so we can copy the other keyframes. Then what we can do here is right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then if I ram preview this, you can see that it's in together and they go really fast and really slow. Okay, so we have the concept down. It's so like boom and boom. Okay, so we've done that part. And obviously you can add an optical flare in the background or some motion track particles if you want. So now what I do is I drag this into a new composition. And I make this, make this composition like five seconds. Five seconds, okay. And I'll drag the whole thing open. And then go back to this composition, control K, and I'm gonna make this comp five seconds long. Okay, 
so it, it ends like right here as we as we know it ends right there okay so now what we're gonna do is expand that the whole way go to effects and presets type in Twixter Twixter Pro apply it and then 59.94 FPS obviously and then go to warp in inverse or smart blend image prep contrast slash edge enhance go to speed keyframe it go one frame over and put it to 15 okay so now as you can tell it is going to be a bit warpy because we have lots of movement happening right yeah so you can see it's warpy and everything you're like ew that's gross so I'm just gonna go to where it ends so like right here and I can just like close the comp there okay so what I did is I made a new adjustment layer I'm just gonna call this blur and I'm gonna find about the area that it takes up so it takes up the bottom half and I can just whoopsies gotta click on my adjustment layer first hit Q to get the rectangle tool and just drag a nice nice uh, rectangle like that about half the screen go to effects and presets and type in fast blur so it applies to fast movement as well uh, you could do real smart motion blur as well I'm probably gonna do that as well so real smart motion blur we'll apply both of them okay motion blur has to be on top because it's stupid and then for the fast blur we can put this to like four okay so now as you can see it looks like it's just a blur then it's not blurred so we can feather this out to about 35 pixels so now it's feathered and everything and we can just ram preview this really quickly hopefully it doesn't take too long okay I'm gonna go in quarter no quarter okay so I can just ram preview this quickly and yeah so it's blurred out at the bottom so you know you can still see the text however it's blurred out so that you don't see as much as a twixter and then you could also speed up this process as well like you could go into your main composition and you could speed this up or whatever so yeah I'm just gonna leave it like this for now I'll go I'll go until it's completely up and then you'll and then I'll stop it okay so we're good okay so now as you can tell we have it going up like that it's warpy but it's blurred out and doesn't really you can't really see the warpiness right like you see it but it's kinda of blurred out it looks like it's heated up or whatever I don't know but anyways that's about it for this tutorial hope you guys enjoyed and if you guys use this effect make sure to uh, set the video as a video response if you want to and that's about all I have time for today thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later bye bye